Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving Eve, everybody. I know someone out there who's giving thanks this Thanksgiving. It's my viewer, Peggy, who sent me the story of how she just knew something wasn't right with her body, and she went to the ER and was diagnosed with heart failure. She is now on medication, and I'm happy the report is doing well. But she asked me to share her story, not only, I guess, because of her issues, but also because she was worried about me a little bit. I'll read you a, a PM she sent to me a little later. But let's first talk about Peggy. Peggy said that she has no history of heart issues in her family, but that she had been diagnosed originally with acid reflux, which, as you know, many people are diagnosed with acid reflux. It's, it's a general practitioner doctor's favorite thing to diagnose people with, even when they have gallbladder issues. They'll put you on the acid reflux medicine before they take your gallbladder out, which had almost cost my own dearest friend, my sissy, her life. So we have to make sure we make ourselves heard to our doctors. One of the things that Peggy wanted me to talk about was salt. And here's the funny thing about salt, which, by the way, I love. And as a, a home chef, I use a lot of kosher, coarse salt. I season my food, so hopefully when my guests or my husband and I eat my food, we don't need the extra salt. But it is interesting that Peggy mentioned salt. We need salt to live. So any doctor who tells you you can have no salt whatsoever is lying to you. You won't live if you don't have salt in your diet. I'm going to tell you that right now. But when you look at what someone with a heart problem is told to do, 2,000 milligrams of salt per day, and then you look at the packaging on some of your foods, even your frozen vegetables, your frozen dinners, your low-calorie frozen dinners. Peggy says she's a little overweight, which a lot of people are. So she may want to try those lean cuisines. Look at that salt content. This is why as a home chef, which I'm proud to be, it's better to make your food if you can from scratch. You put the salt in as you're cooking it. It's a hell of a lot better because if you look at those canned soup cans, look at the salt content. It's more than your daily allowance. It's more than someone with heart disease can eat. And yet, you can't taste the salt in these meals. I'm going to give you an example, and I guess these people won't be endorsing my show anytime soon because I'm looking for endorsements. I am actually looking to make this show just a little bit better and maybe get some endorsements. The Sharpie people, the Heinz jarred gravy people, although you got a lot of salt in your gravy too, but that's okay. It's for Thanksgiving. It's for special occasions. But um, Stouffer's lasagna, for example. It's delicious, but it needs salt, except it doesn't need salt because it already has salt. The problem is you can't taste the salt. My husband is a big fan of Stouffer's lasagna. It is really, really good, as is their mac and cheese. And yet, when it comes out of the oven or the microwave and you taste it, it's bland. It's like there's no seasoning in it. But if you look at the package, it's got a lot of salt in it. And I ask, where is the salt? Because you can't taste it once you cook it. But it's still in there. And it can still hurt you if you do have a condition where your doctor tells you to cut back on your salt. So you have to be really careful. If you are a person who has been told to cut back on your salt, you have to look at things that you normally wouldn't look at. You have to read your labels. You know, I used to be a big fan of lean cuisine meals and Weight Watchers meals. And yet, they were low in calories, low in fat. I lost a ton of weight, but I was getting a hell of a lot of salt with every one of those meals I ate. Because not only did I make them, 
But when I tasted them, they were bland, and I added more salt to them because I couldn't eat them. I am a person who really loves salty food. So if somebody told me I could no longer eat salt, I would probably just want to die. But Peggy is trying to do the right thing. She's trying to live by her doctor's advice. Although, Peggy, I do want to say to you that you telling me that your heart condition was caused by a fire in an apartment, I don't believe that that's true. And this is going to bring me to the next part of this show. A stressful situation that makes you have to go to the hospital for agita, which I, I call it agita. I mean, you're upset. The apartment next to you just burned down. You're freaking out. And you go to the hospital and they tell you now that you're in heart failure. Peggy, trust me on this one, darling. It doesn't happen. And I can tell you this because nobody has been more stressed out than Paula Luciano, political Paula. When a cop knocks on your door at 2 p.m. and tells you your drunk neighbor just totaled your car. And then the next day your oven breaks and you have a gas leak in your house and the fire department shows up. There ain't no more stress than that. <laughs> but I didn't end up in the hospital. You all know, everybody who watches my show knows that I absolutely lose my fucking mind if the power goes out for even 10 minutes. If the cable goes out, if the internet goes out, that has not caused me to go into heart failure. So if anybody told you, Peggy, that your stress over one situation caused your heart failure, that's not true. You probably were in heart failure for a lot longer, but your doctors didn't catch it. And there I go, segue into my next comment, is Peggy says that she had been treated for acid reflux and that she had to make a decision. Because acid reflux can actually mimic heart, heart disease. I have acid reflux. I get it. I don't get it as often anymore since I've been on the probiotic. By the way, Peggy, probiotics are awesome. I eat a baby bell cheese every day and I take a probiotic. And it not only keeps me regular in other departments, but it calms my acid reflux. So that's just something to think about. Acid reflux is not heart disease. But unfortunately, heart disease is often ignored and diagnosed as acid reflux. Now, I know I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I have a reason for that. Just like I know why my sissy was told she had acid reflux rather than just giving her the $200 ultrasound, finding out her gallbladder was collapsing and badly diseased, and getting the gallbladder out, well, the pharmaceutical companies made a lot of money on my sissy. She was on their acid reflux prescription meds for five months. She lost 40 pounds. She could not eat anything. She missed a lot of work. And then she ended up in the ER to get emergency gallbladder surgery. This is why we come to the next part of Peggy's PM to me, which was really cool. And I'm going to read it to you verbatim because I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. So, how long do you wait before going to the doctor or the hospital when something is wrong in a waiter like you? Because everybody knows I don't do doctors. I don't even have a primary care physician. And I haven't seen my OBGYN since 2015. And I don't care. I'm not worried about it. I really don't. Here's what I'm going to say to both Peggy and all of you out there. I think you all know your bodies. I think it's important that if you don't know your body, you should... Get in touch with your body. Since I have become a little bit on the older end of the age spectrum, I know that I have aches and pains. I have a cyst on my back that my husband popped eight years ago, got a lot of pus out of it. 
And it grew back, but it grew back at like a quarter of the size. And he's like, well, don't you think you should see a doctor about that? No. First of all, I've had it for over eight years. Second of all, it's not all that big. It doesn't hurt. And guess what? If it were cancer, I'd be dead. Because it's been eight years. I have removed skin tags in my bathtub out of places where you don't even want to know. I just pulled them and cut them, bled out, put some peroxide on it, walked away. Done. I Google before I doctor. Because 90% of what's wrong with me, I can actually figure out on Google and either fix it at home or just live with it. That said, I will tell Peggy, who loves me and is concerned about me and has been a longtime viewer of this show, that I will know when it's time to call the ambulance. I'll know. And that is because I know every lump, bump, pain, everything in my own body. I take notice. And then I keep an eye on it. If it grows, if it changes, if I am in pain that I can no longer stand, I'm going to the hospital. If it's something that's a little weird or new, disconcerting, I'll Google it. And if it looks bad, I'll go to the doctor. But the problem is, and this is the message of this show today, and I please don't, please, please go to the doctor if you want to go to the doctor. But I am so sick and tired of hearing from people that they know something's wrong with them. They go to the doctor and the doctor puts them through all this crap and tells them nothing's wrong with them. And a month or two later, they're, they're diagnosed with stage four cancer. And it happens. If you don't know your body and you don't know what you want the doctor to look for, they're going to look for everything else. Just like my sissy, who we all told her right off the bat, you have gallbladder issues. And her doctor kept saying it's acid reflux. And she almost died. Because her gallbladder was septic. If that gallbladder had burst, if she had gone even one more day without surgery, because her... Mm, I'm trying to keep it clean. Her freaking primary care doctor kept saying just... Take the, pre the, the prescription acid reflux. It's acid reflux. No, it's not acid reflux. This is gallbladder disease. She had to beg to get in to see a surgeon, and she didn't even make it to the surgeon because she started spiking a fever. I took her to the emergency room myself. And they had to put her on all kinds of drugs and antibiotics before they could even operate on her. Because her primary doctor didn't listen. And that's part of the problem, Peggy. That's why I don't go to the doctor. I know what gallbladder feels like. If I get a gallbladder attack, I'm not going to any doctor. I'm going to the ER. And I'm going to tell them to ultrasound my bloody gallbladder... And then get it the fuck out. Sorry for the F-bomb. But sometimes that's just what you have to do. You get women who have never missed a pap smear. And they go in and all of a sudden they have all these symptoms. And they're like, you have stage 4 cervical cancer. How can I have cervical cancer? I've had a pap smear every year since, since I'm 18 years old. 30 years of pap smears. Now I have cancer. How did you miss that? Oops. There's too many oops in medicine. And there's too many, hell, I can get a free cruise if I prescribe acid reflux medicine for someone who has gallbladder disease and see how long we can get them till they have the gallbladder out. Because for every prescription I write for Nexium, my wife and I get a free cruise. And my patient gets to miss work and keep having gallbladder attacks while she's popping medication she doesn't even need. 
This is why, Peggy, I'm a waiter. This is why I don't run to the doctor every time I find a lump or I have an ache or a pain. This is why. Because I don't have the time nor the inclination to get shit shoved down my throat, shoved up my ass, only to find out all I needed was an aspirin. Or I needed to elevate. I don't need these this crap that doctors throw at you when you come to them and you say something doesn't feel right and then they decide to decide which company is going to give them the best perks and give you those tests. Well, let's rule this out. Let's rule that out. No, how about, how about, MFR, trying to be nice. I googled my symptoms. I know what I want you to look for. You look for it. And you don't look for anything else. The great thing about political Paula, about, no, no, no. About Paula Luciano, the woman, is before I ever get into a doctor's office, I'm already going to have a pretty good idea of what's wrong with me. And then it'll be a test on the doctor. And see if he figures it out too. And I think sadly in America today, with all the perks that farm companies throw at these doctors to get their patients on prescription drugs they don't need. Rather than just cure them. What we did last week. We're not going to do a complete hysterectomy because then the OBGYNs won't have any more business. Once you get rid of all the reproductive organs, no one will go to the OBGYN anymore. Well, you know, some women would be real happy about that. But the OBGYNs won't because they won't get their 250 bucks a visit every year. Once a woman can't have babies, oh, we lose the maternity business. It's all about money for these people, and that's what makes the medical, the medical community, the pharmaceutical community, the healthcare community in America so horrible, is that we know they only care about the money. They don't give a shit if I live to be 100 years old. Peggy, they don't care if you live to be 100 years old. They don't care. They just want to make sure that they get as much money out of you while you are alive as they can. And then they'll send your husband a condolence card when you die because they fucked it up. They misdiagnosed you. Like almost happened to my sissy. Like what did happen to my mother with malpractice. And like what's never going to happen to me. So, Peggy, I hope I did well by your show idea. I love you, girl. And I can't wait until one day you have the insurance you actually deserve. And I know it's coming for you. Because you married well. Just a little joke there. But at the end of the day, as I said, um, know your body. Also know your mind. Speak your mind. Even if you're a woman. We all said last week. Men, male doctors, women doctors, they don't listen to women. We'll make them listen to you. Because after all, at the end of the day, it's your body. You know when something really, really isn't right. And you need to demand that they take good care of you. Because after all, you are paying for it. Political Paula is out.